let's go to South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Of course, the senator is the chair of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, senator, welcome. Very good to have you. Thank you. You know, um, it's interesting. Nancy Pelosi was commenting on this uh, Mueller investigation and said of the attorney general who presented it uh, that we have to see the facts. I don't need your interpretation, said it was, in fact, condescending. What did you think of that? Well, I think that was uh, really beneath the speaker. I mean, do you really believe that Bob Barr would give us a summary of the f key findings and it not be supported by the report? Give me a break. I mean, this whole Oliver Stone approach to the Mueller report by Democrats is getting a bit old. So the attorney general is going to take out grand jury testimony because that's required by law. He's going to talk to prosecutors of other cases to make sure they're not undermined, and he's going to go to the intelligence community and say, is there anything in this report you think would hurt our national security? Once that's done, he's going to give it to the Congress, starting with the Senate, and he'll come and testify sometimes in April, I think. So, Senator, when you hear James Comey making the rounds saying that it yeah. doesn't make sense that uh, Mueller didn't rule one way or the other on the obstruction of justice, what do you make of that? I'm not so sure I'd follow his guide as to what makes sense. I mean, the guy spent two and a half years, $25 million, 40 FBI agents, hundreds of subpoenas, hundreds of witness interviews, and he says in a report apparently that there is, he can't decide uh, one way or the other about obstruction of justice. When the underlying crime doesn't exist, it becomes virtually impossible to approve obstruction of justice. And from Barr's point of view, what is he supposed to say? If Mueller can't decide after two and a half years, what other outcome is there than to move forward? So I'm, I'm not confused at all. I mean, we'll have Comey come in and tell us about everything, about the FISA warrant, about the Bruce Orr interview was still, about the counterintelligence operation. I promise you that Mr. Comey will come before the committee in a public setting and he'll, he'll be asked some questions about the dossier and everything else. So you have already put out a request to speak with him? No, I, mean, I, I just know what's going to happen. Once we put the Mueller report to bed, once Barr comes to the committee and takes questions about his findings and his actions, and we get to see the Mueller report consistent with law, then we're going to turn to finding out how this got off the rails. I know Attorney General Barr, it's not if he looks at what happened, it's how he does. Does he do it internally? Does he appoint a special counsel? Mr. Horowitz is looking at the FISA abuse allegations. I'll be looking at the FISA abuse. I'll be looking at the counterintelligence operation. Why did they not tell Trump if it truly was a counterintelligence operation? There'll be a lot of inquiry as to how this all happened. Indeed, the president is open to your idea, Senator, to call a special counsel to review the probe origins. Uh, yeah. Any update on that? No, but the reason I've suggested that in 2017, Neil, is that this is a highly emotional event. Republicans believe that the FBI and DOJ, the top people, took the law in their own hands because they wanted Clinton to win and Trump to lose. You know, there's a lot of suspicion. There's a lot of direct evidence of, I think, of, of, of bias. Let's have somebody like a Mueller to look at the other side of the story so when they issue their report, we'll have confidence it's not a political politically motivated document. I think a special counsel would serve the country well, but I'll leave that up to Mr. Barr. Attorney General Barr is a seasoned prosecutor. He's been attorney general before. I trust his judgment. Um, the attorney general did say that there was no collusion. Obviously, he came out with his bullet points, the three or four right. pages that came out a few days ago, Senator. Um, right. Some argue that he took a leap uh, to comment the way he had about the obstruction of justice charge. Now, we did say that this report neither exonerated him or, or, or didn't, right. but, but it, it raised concerns. Well, what was he trying to say? Now, obviously, Mr. Mueller would have come out and corrected him if he said anything wrong, I would assume. But it's, yeah. it started this whole debate as to, yeah. you know, whether he was trying to reframe the report. Well, let's, let's uh, assume for a moment that for some reason that Attorney General Barr went forward on an obstruction case. When Mueller said after two and a half years, uh, I can't say the facts are one way, they're another way, the law is complicated, I can't decide. If I'm a defense attorney, the first document I would want was Mueller's indecision. 
After two and a half years and $25 million and 40 FBI agents, you can't decide. How the hell is Barr going to decide? We're not talking about you know, some academic exercise here. We're talking about proving a crime beyond a reasonable doubt. If the underlying offense never existed, and after two and a half years, Mueller cannot say one way or the other if there was a obstruction of justice, that should end the matter. For Barr to do anything else would have been very irresponsible. Do you believe, as uh, Director Comey had, that it, it surprised him that his very firing, Comey's firing, uh, didn't warrant more tension as an obstruction of justice issue. Well, if you're going to fire people who believe, I mean, if you're going to charge people the obstruction of justice for wanting Comey fired, you'd have to charge half of the Democratic Party. The day before Trump fired the guy, uh, you know, Schumer and Bernie Sanders and many others said, I've lost confidence in this guy. It was a well known fact that Democrats were upset with Comey. They were calling for him to be dismissed. So, all I can say is that when it comes to Director Comey's dismissal, the president, as the president of the United States, has almost unlimited discretion. But the performance of Mr. Comey in the eyes of Democrats were substandard. Um, Adam Schiff uh, was getting an earful today <laughs> from Republicans on his committee who, yes, uh, to a banner woman, urged him to step down, uh, that his, his continued charges of collusion, even in the face of this report, was a bridge too far. Uh, it led to a lot of nastiness back and forth. Yeah. What did you think of what, what they were recommending, that he, he stepped down? Nancy Pelosi stood by him, said he's doing a great job. Yeah. Your thoughts? Well, when one politician is call, calling on another to step down, most of the public kind of tunes it out. But here's what I would say in, in all seriousness. Mueller was given the ability to complete his job without political interference. I stood behind Mueller. Almost every Democrat said he was the right guy. And, and, and Congressman Schiff is really becoming Oliver Stone of the House. He's the Jim Garrison figure trying to look for somebody who actually shot President Kennedy. This is getting to be a bit ridiculous. He told us time and time again he knows there's collusion. He's seen evidence of it. Well, Mr. Mueller undercut that narrative. So Adam Schiff's got to make a decision about his political future. Does he want to be the guy that, ha that won't let it go uh, when the, uh, 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 the authority in the, of the investigation, Mr. Mueller, has concluded there was no collusion. Rand Paul was here not too long ago urging that maybe it's time for former CIA director uh, John Brennan to testify. How do you feel about that? Well, I, you know, I don't know what role that, that Brennan played, but let's look at everybody. I'll talk to the Intelligence Committee. But, you know, as Judiciary Chairman, it's our job to watch those who watch us, the FBI. Great organization, but clearly there were some uh, misdeeds at the top, I think. The question for the country really is how could the system allow a dossier that was prepared by a foreign agent paid for by the Democratic Party that's unfair, unverified to this day be used on four different occasions to get a warrant against an American citizen. And the evidence is pretty clear to me. Without the dossier, the warrant would not have been issued. That should bother every American that the system got so off the rails. And finally, counterintelligence investigations are designed to protect the target of the foreign influence. When they thought Dianne Feinstein had somebody in our office working for the Chinese, they told her about it and she fired him. Why didn't they go to Trump and say, hey, we're worried about some people on your campaign? That really is disturbing. So I want to get to the bottom of it. Well, you know, that dossier that was making the rounds of the president uh, charged the, the late uh, John yeah. McCain, your, your good friend, uh, yeah. was shopping that around, did get that out, did get that yeah. to the authorities and even yeah. to the press. What did you think yeah. of that when he said that? Well, I think the president is wrong. I, Senator McCain was given the dossier. He informed me that he had it. And he said, I think I'm going to give this to FBI. And I said, that's exactly what you need to do. I don't know if it's a bunch of garbage from the Russians. That's the first thing I thought of. Would you have done the same thing, Senator? I'll, absolutely. If somebody had given me the dossier making these wild accusations, I would have turned it over to some law enforcement organization that had the ability to find out if it was true or not. I would not have given it to the press, but somebody, the McCain Institute guy did. I think Mr. Kramer was his name. Uh, I can't remember his name, but somebody working for the McCain Institute did shop it around, and they so did the country. So was that a fair criticism on the part of the president? I know you were, were you were in a As delicate position. McCain, you no. were a friend to John McCain. No. The president no. has, has really harangued John McCain. Right. Um, what do you think of that in retrospect? 
Well, I just don't think it serves the president well. I think John McCain is an American hero in my eyes and many others. It's okay to have a dispute with John McCain over policy, but John McCain acted responsibly in my view because when I saw the dossier, I said, turn it over to the FBI. Did you tell that to the president? He obviously doesn't. Yeah, I did. That. And I what did, did he well, say? Well, I think he does. I, I hope he understands the facts because the facts are clear. John McCain did not send it around to the press. Someone else did. And when they did that, they, there was a great disservice to the country. The bottom line as to President Trump, I think he's done a really good job as president. I don't think it helps him to get in a, in, in a fight with John McCain or any other person. What I'd like to do is look forward. He has every right to be mad at the system that tried to destroy its presidency. Did they try to use the 25th Amendment to get him out of office? Was there a bureaucratic right. coup here? He's got a lot to be concerned about, but I would recommend that we look forward. And that seems to me what he's doing. All right. Lindsey Graham, thank you, Senator. Very good seeing you again. Thank you.